iOS shortcuts an application that's available on devices running iOS 12 and forward. What this application allows you to do is to do a lot of repeated actions. In this case, I want to set it up for the first time. If you've never run shortcuts, you want to at least run one shortcut to be able to download the shortcut directly from the website. In this case, this is a record memo shortcut so that when you enable it, it allows you to be able to instantly record it by telling Siri, hey Siri, record audio or something like that. All right, the next part, the next thing you want to do is to set up your iPad to download shortcuts directly from Routine Hub. In this case, you want to go into the settings, you want to find the shortcut application and you're going to enable where it says allow untrusted shortcuts. This allows you to download iOS shortcuts directly into the application. If you don't want to download it, but if you want to make it yourself, then the next video I'm going to the next part I'm going to show how exactly this shortcut was made. But once you've gone into the website, the link in the description, you want to select it so that it gets downloaded. Once it's downloaded, you can actually scroll through and see the exact way that this shortcut was designed. And you can add untrusted shortcut. This allows it to be added. I already have it, so it's giving me this option, but I replaced it so that it's it's here and I can demonstrate this. All right, so let's open up the shortcut and see what exactly is inside. So the way the shortcuts work is it gets an input either from the share option or from me actually tapping on the, on the iOS shortcut. It will present you a menu so that you'll be able to select the files you want to use. This shortcut only accepts zip files or regular audio files. Once it's sorted it, it's going to put it into a zip and then it's going to send it directly into Nano Studio 2. Now, to use the iOS shortcut, all you want to do is just run it. You can run it by tapping on the icon directly. It's going to present you this menu where you can select the file. In this case, I'm going to select a zip file. The file opens up and it shows me this option near the very top. Just like that, the audio stems have been imported. I can go into Nano Studio 2 and actually edit this or import it using the Slate Drum. To get here, I'm just going to navigate directly into the library and I can see the folders of all the files that were imported. So we're going to take a listen and yeah, we can drag and drop, we can play it on there. One of the things we want to do is set it to sustain. The reason is so that when we play the drum kit, it's not looping consistently. That way we can actually just play, we can actually just enable it directly from Nano Studio 2's MIDI timeline, so that for as long as the MIDI note is pressed, the audio will play. So we're going to actually use the MIDI timeline. We can actually trigger one of the 32 or actually all of them. In this case, I'm just going to extend it to that for as long as this thing is playing. It's going to just keep playing the audio stems here. Nano Studio 2, as of the female of this video, is set to only MIDI mode. So it only allows you to work on MIDI. But the fact that it actually has this feature here allows you to be able to do a lot of audio editing. And there's quite a lot of audio editing features in Nano Studio 2. So we're going to take a look into it. So you can actually edit audio in Nano Studio 2. What you want to do is select the audio file directly on the Slate Drum Kit. You're able to now select specific sections. For example, if you want to trim it, if you want to reverse the audio, if you want to reduce it, if you want to add like a attack, you're able to do this a lot. You can actually just trim it down to only select a specific loop, for example. You can even do some volume controls. If you want to adjust the volume of one section, you're able to do it. You can actually like invert it. You can mute it completely so that it's completely silent. You can normalize the volume as well. There's quite a lot of features in this thing, like fading in, fading out, that it's so underrated. And this is independent of each of the drum pads. So if you do it on one of the state packs, it's completely different on the other one. So this allows for a lot of customization with your audio. You can even select all the audio, copy it, and paste it. 
to like extend the time on. And you can enable it so that it's synced to the grid if you want to be able to see compared to the actual original project. So this allows for a lot more to be done. All right, don't forget to save the audio and let's give it a listen. There's a lot more you can do in Nano Studio 2. You can select the files, import it. You can actually change the levels of it. You can add EQ, filters, limiters onto each of the individual pads. So it's independent of each of the squares. When you want to enable a particular pad to work, all you just have to do is edit the unique level. So in this case, I'm just going to scroll down and edit it specifically. So by tapping on the MIDI, I'm able to view the entire MIDI timeline. And I can actually edit a particular pad. So if I want one to play at specific times, I just have to enable it by drawing it there. And that's all I need to do. You can import audios as well directly into Nano Studio 2 by using the share option in the share sheet with this shortcut. What you want to do is you want to open up the location of all of your audio stem files. When you find the audio, you want to select all of them or the stems you want to import directly into it. You're then going to share it into the shortcut. You find the Nano Studio 2 shortcut. And it's going to do the same process again. It may take a few seconds because it's designed to account for you opening up Nano Studio 2 for the first time. But once it's done, you should see that important option there. And you can then go back into the folder and continue working on it. Now, the last thing is you can actually record audio in Nano Studio 2 using the slide drum. What you want to do is you want to select an empty bank and it'll give you the option to record audio. From there, you can just press the record button and record the audio exactly as you want to record. So once the audio has been recorded, you can actually edit it. Similar to what you did in the sleep pad. One, Let's two, give it a three, listen. Four. Let's get the sound going on now. Okay. All right, so we're just going to do some random edits. I'm going to trim. I'm going to remove a lot of dead spots in it. There's quite a lot of editing that is possible directly in the slate pad. For example, in this case, I just reduced the volume completely or specific places because I wanted it to be silent. One, two, three, four. Let's get the song going on now. Okay. You can actually trim stuff. You can fade things in. Of course, you can duplicate it if you want to make the audio a lot longer. There's quite a, there's a lot of things possible directly in the slate drum kit that it's all experimenting. Find out what works for you. And yeah. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Take it easy.